What's going on ladies and gentlemen? For those of you who have not been here before, my name is Dalton and welcome to my channel. On today's agenda, I am going to walk you through how I set up my data fields on the Wahoo Element Bolt. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that I'm setting up my Wahoo with power numbers as some of my primary data fields. Now, if you don't have a power meter, that is okay. There are alternatives to the power numbers and I will dive into those as we get later in this video. However, I will just say the easy way to do it is swap out your power numbers for speed and you're basically set. Now, before we dive into this, I want to say that there are multiple pages on the Wahoo that you can set up. If you're looking for a particular page like the climbing page or the Strava Life Segments page or the routes page or any of those and you want to see specifically how I have that particular page set up, go ahead and use the timestamps below to jump to the page that you're looking for. I'll make sure to include those timestamps to make it easy on you. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my cell phone, and we are going to jump into the Wahoo Element app. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your Wahoo Element Bolt is powered on in order to rearrange these data fields. And when you do rearrange them in the app, you are gonna be able to see them adjust live. And that's actually a pretty cool feature, so you know what your data fields are gonna look like real time as you make the adjustments to see if it's actually set up to your liking. So the first thing we want to do is we want to jump into our settings. Now, my Wahoo needs an update, but we're going to ignore that for now, and I'll come back and just do that before my next ride. You're going to want to scroll down here, and you're going to look under the Customize tab. So go ahead and go to Pages, and then you're going to see basically everything that's here. And you can turn on the actual different pages that you want to be displayed on your Wahoo. I do have the lap data page on, and that's an extremely important page for me because anytime I'm outside doing workouts and trying to get in some intervals, I think it's really important to be able to see your lap data. And if you lap the Wahoo, then it breaks down your workout and you can see the actual power numbers that you put up during that segment. And let's dive into what fields I have on that particular page. So you go ahead and click here. I obviously named the page lap data. We'll keep scrolling down here and you can do nine different data fields. So. Of course, at the top, what you can see here is that I have my average power. Now, average power I have at three seconds. And the reason that I have average power at three seconds is because instantaneous power is all over the place. It jumps back and forth super quick, and it's not actually easy to identify your target power and stay within that dead band. Average power at three seconds is extremely helpful because it's a little bit slower to react. So over time, you can make sure to find say 300 watts and you can stay within five or so watts of that number. So the next most important field in my opinion is the heart rate field. You wanna have the heart rate field in here so you can just monitor where you're at at all times. If your zones start to separate and you're in a different heart rate zone than say your power is displaying, that's important to know. Next most important thing I would say is cadence. Usually I don't pay too much attention to cadence, but I do like to make sure that my cadence isn't way out of the ordinary. Current lap active time is next up on the list, and that one is really important because anytime you're doing a timed interval, say five, 10 minutes, whatever, you wanna know that you're lapping right at the exact time you need to. So when that turns over to 10 minutes, you can hit lap again, and then boom, you've got another one. So the next thing on here is lap number. I don't really find a ton of value from the lap number, but it is good to keep track if you know you're in say your third or fourth interval that you're getting later in the exercise. Warm up counts as a lap, it is what it is. Just know that when you have this field programmed in here. To see where I'm at during an interval and to make sure that my heart isn't actually exploding, I like to put average heart rate next and then I follow that up with my average power for the lap. So say I'm targeting 300 and I'm a little bit below, I know I can kick it up a little bit on the back end and then I'll hit that 300 marker, or at least get my average pretty close. That way I was actually doing my target threshold interval. Now, if you hit the up button on your Wahoo, what you'll realize is that two of the data fields that you select here out of the nine total data fields um, are actually not displayed on your screen. And you know, if you have a tougher time seeing this when you're riding on your bike and this is a little bit further away from you and you wanna see those fields a bit bigger, what's really solid is you can just tap that up button and then you'll have larger data fields and then the two at the bottom will fall off. So I really recommend putting your least important two at the very bottom of this page. So really quickly, I wanna walk you guys through where to find some of these. And it's pretty intuitive once you do actually drill down into one of these particular data fields. So if you click on average power, for example, and you scroll down here, you'll obviously see the different options that are underneath power. So go ahead and click on power. 
You're gonna go in here and then you can go ahead and scroll down. It'll tell you what number actually is next to the particular data field that you have selected. So obviously this is data field number one for this page. We're gonna scroll down here and we see power average over time. Boom, you're gonna hit the average power, three seconds. That puts that right at the top of that page and then that'll be your primary data field that you see nice and bold just like this on the Wahoo Element Bolt. So lab data, all done. Let's go ahead and jump over to our next page here, which is gonna be your total workout data. The workout data page is gonna be the most important page that you're probably gonna be using all the time on pretty much any ride. And now I have it set up with all nine data fields included. One data field that is really not important that you guys probably won't have is the SRAM electronic gearing. And that's at the bottom, well, I guess it would be your guys' right here. Um, and typically when I'm looking at this, I, I really never use this gearing. It's just one of those things that's a little bit more convenient because I don't have to look down and see my rear cog to realize what gear I'm in. It's right here on my head unit. So typically I'm looking at it in the seven field setup, just like this. And at the top, once again, we have your average power, three seconds, I showed you where to find that, super simple. You're gonna want your heart rate next and then your cadence is gonna follow that. Right after that, this is where things are sort of gonna differentiate between this page and the lap page that we had previously looked at. So like I said before, if you have speed and you don't have any power on here, then I would say go ahead and just put your current speed at the top in place of average power. But since I have power, that is my primary. After your heart rate cadence, I go ahead and I put in my current speed and the speed field you're gonna want is the current speed versus workout average. I don't know why it's called this, but it's easy to find. You just tap through here. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna scroll down to speed and then boom, it is the top selection on here. I'm not really sure why the rest of these are really included, but the current speed versus workout average is the one you want. After that, you wanna see the total distance traveled during your workout. So if you're out, you're targeting 100 miles, you need to know how far you've ridden, and that's gonna be included in the distance workout field. To follow up distance, we're gonna look at our active time. This is really helpful when I'm targeting a certain number of hours in the saddle on that day. So you go ahead, jump down here, use active time, you can go ahead and scroll down to time, and then boom, you have active time number six right there, and that's for the workout. Next on the list is the time of day. So this is important for obvious reasons. If I have dinner at six and I need to be home by 545, then I need to make sure I know what time it is. That one's pretty straightforward. It's in the same location as active time. You just click through, you're gonna go ahead and go to time and then boom, pull up time of day and you're set. Once again, I do sometimes use the bottom two fields and those are the two that you get when you press the down button and you get a little bit of expansion here. Now, the important thing to note is that I keep things that are a little less important here. If I feel like I've really been grinding all day and I'm curious what my average wattage is, then I'm gonna see my average power. Now to get this to display average watts in the lower left hand corner, you're gonna go ahead and click on average power go down to power, and this is gonna be average power for the entire workout, so you're gonna select that. Last but not least, like I said, I do have SRAM 12-speed gearing. I go ahead and use current gear, but one thing that you can actually swap this out for that I've actually been meaning to swap this out for is my maximum power during the workout. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and pop in here, make that change, and then actually, if you look at my Wahoo Element Bolt, you will realize that that change was made right here on the screen in real time, which is something that's pretty cool because if you don't actually like the layout that you're getting, you can change it on your phone and you will immediately see the changes happening right here on the element bolt. So let's go ahead and back out of workout data and move on to our next page. And who doesn't love climbing? So if you go into the climbing page here, you're gonna see a couple different fields actually. And that's because climbing is pretty unique. You wanna see a few other things like the grade that you're dealing with, how much you've ascended and descended on that ride. And then you also wanna see your VAM, which is basically a meters per hour data field that tells you how quickly you're ascending the mountain. If you hit page over, you're gonna see this climbing page. It's gonna be on your bolt and it looks a little bit like this. You will see the elevation profile here at the bottom if you have a route or you are on a particular road and it's programmed in here into your bolt, you will see that elevation profile at this very bottom of this screen. Now, let's dive into the actual data fields that I'm dealing with here. Once again, I have average power at the top of my screen. Power is king. Next, I want current speed versus workout average so I know how slow I'm going up that 8% grade. 
And then after that, I do want the grade. And grade is actually in grade. And then you can go in here, you're gonna click climbing and pretty much all of these data fields that you're gonna be interested in for the climbing page are gonna be right here in the climbing category. So as you can see, I've got grade in here at number three. Total ascent for the workout is at number four. That tells you how many feet you've climbed so far. Total descent, the exact opposite, how many feet you've descended so far in the workout. And then obviously, um, like I talked about, you're gonna have your VAM in here and then your current elevation. So if you're sitting up in Big Bear or whatever your nearest mountain is, then you're gonna realize you're at eight, 9,000 feet and that's why you're dying for oxygen. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna back out of the select fields here. That is the climbing page. It's pretty straightforward. If you wanna rearrange any of these fields and say maybe bring your current speed to the top, you can click this hamburger menu to the right and you can go ahead and just drag it to the top. I don't actually wanna do that. I wanna keep average power at the top because that's personally my most important data field. Like I said, you can replace average power with your current speed versus workout average if you don't have a power meter on your bike. So we are gonna jump in here to the map and map is nothing crazy map is really just what you're going to see when you have a route programmed in really there are only two um, key data fields that are going to be displayed at the top of this page and you can see them right here now i've got those set up i used to actually have current speed on here but then i realized that didn't matter much when i was trying to figure out where i was going just above my map are gonna be the average power and the grade. And once again, like I said, average power, three second average, that's gonna be found under your power data. And then the grade is gonna be found under the different climbing fields that are available. You can order these however you want. I choose to have average power on the left, grade on the right. That's just the way my brain works. Now exiting the map page. There is really only one additional page that is remotely important in here. And I think that this is probably kind of a bonus page for a lot of you guys, but if you do have the Strava subscription, if you give a about KOMs and you like picking on people in your neighborhood and stealing their precious crowns, then this one's gonna be for you. And that is the Strava Live segments. As you can see, I have entered the realm of Strava Live segments here. I do have that page on. What I want to see is the lap segment time. That is non-negotiable. I need to know how deep into the segment I am. I have current speed to see how fast I'm going because that's actually the most important thing that you're gonna see when you are in a particular segment. I have the ahead and behind time of the segment. And then let's actually just go ahead and click on that. I can scroll down here and then there's actually Strava data fields and those are gonna be the ones you want anyway. So basically you can see everything I have here in the one position of lap segment time and then two obviously with speed, that's in under the speed fields. And then three, four, five, and six are all actually Strava fields that I want on this Strava page. So if we go ahead and we back out of here, you're gonna see all seven data fields. The reason that there's not additional data fields is because what pops up on the bottom of the Strava Live segment screen is sort of a checkered flag and sort of a time to or estimated time to completion. And that's gonna be showing you basically where you're at versus your PR or versus the KOM or whatever you're on pace to set. So let's just run through these really quickly. We've got current speed, ahead behind time, goal duration, the distance remaining, the estimated duration, and the grade. So real quick, I know this kind of brings us to the end of the actual data fields themselves, but regarding Strava Live segments, something I found that I really didn't enjoy was the automatic changing of pages from my main workout data page to the Strava Live segments page. Now, if I was intentionally targeting a segment, that's a different story, but a lot of times I'd just be riding along and I have different segments starred. And the problem is, is on the Wahoo, if you have starred segments and you have this particular setting that I'm gonna talk about enabled, then the Wahoo element bolt will automatically take you from your workout data page and it will jump you over to the Strava Life segments page and then you'll basically not be seeing all your regular workout data and you have to switch through your pages to get back to that front page. That was starting to really bug the heck out of me. So I went ahead and there's an additional setting in the app that I'm gonna show you really quickly that you can utilize to not automatically switch you from your main workout data page to the Strava Live segment page. So if we back out of customized pages here, we can go ahead and we can scroll down 
and you're gonna get all the way down here to ride. And what you're gonna see is Strava Live Segments. Go ahead and click on that real quick. Now I do have Live Segments enabled, like I said. The big setting here that's really important though is automatic page changes. You wanna make sure that that is toggled off. I do have notifications on so that when I am coming into a segment, it does notify me that I'm coming into a segment, but it doesn't automatically change the page, so it doesn't scramble all my data. All right, folks. Well, that's how I set up my Wahoo Element Bolt data fields. If you think there's a better way to set up your data fields, or maybe you have a few different data fields in there that you think are super important, go ahead, throw those in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think on the subject. Take care, and I will see you all soon.